Let me tell you the wrong way to pick what product you should sell and how to position it in the marketplace. Step one, look at what everybody else is doing. Step two, look at what everybody else is charging. And step three, try to do it better than them. That is the wrong way to enter a business. Let me tell you the right way to do something. Find out what your customer values and what they're struggling with. Then develop a solution to that problem. And three, position it in a way that makes their life better. I had a mentor who used to say, find out what something is worth to someone, solve it and charge a little bit less than what they're willing to pay. Oftentimes when you're selling a product, especially a physical product, it's tempting to compare your product to everybody else and what everybody else is selling it for. But the way that you build a brand is by positioning your product as a solution to a problem and then valuing that product in the context of what that problem is costing your customer. In this episode, I'm gonna walk through a case study of exactly that. One of our members inside the 1% was struggling with how to position his product and how to do it in a way that stood out in a noisy marketplace. He's selling a product that a lot of different people sell. How do we position it in a way that is in service to a specific person with a pain point and charge appropriately so that we can build a brand around that product? Here's the consultant call that we had with Heinz inside of the 1%. Uh, since last meeting, we've been really refining the who because we realize the importance of it. Our who, the persona, is someone who uses technology for the daily tasks. They just realized that the excessive use of devices, particularly smartphones, has started to take a toll on his ability to be present, truly engaged in real life moments. Yep. Also affecting his mental well-being and productivity. I think it's, I, I feel similar to the conversation with Deep Jot that I think it's actually a little too specific. I think you can, I think you can say that in a sentence that is, that is like, people who are limiting their technology use. That's the purpose of this brand. We're in, in the phase that we're deciding what industry to get in because this this product, you know, I talked to you about it. The phone lock box can go to the digital well-being industry or mindfulness, meditation, or all, yep. pro also productivity. Yeah. So I just I just wanted to ask you, which one do you think? Uh, would I don't be think you need to choose. Huh? I, I I mean, I think you can choose, but I don't think you need to choose. I mean, the fact that we just this one sentence about your market being about limiting technology use. That is specific enough. I think that it will work into all of these markets. Now, if you want to go specific so that you're narrowed in on exactly who that is, then let, I mean, it could be any of these. Let's just pick productivity. If you pick productivity, then you penetrate that market and you get all the other markets with them. It's just like how Jake said about GoPro and surfers. If you yeah. go after an entire group of people, you get them and that becomes the social proof for everybody else. So I don't think it matters who you pick. I think it just matters that you're clear in your messaging about what your brand is here to do and who you're here to do it for. So it would be just limiting technology use. A person. I think that's the purpose of your brand. Yeah, yeah, so that people have more control over their time and their day and their focus. And that day and their focus is now freed up for productivity, meditation and parenting and whatever. Yeah. Because the, the the way we thought about it, I mean, like it would be, be between the products, it would be a routine. So first you put the phone lock, uh, your phone in the phone lock box, you know, during when you're gonna sleep and then you wake up and still your phone is in the lock box. Yeah. So you cannot use it and you want to be more present. So you have uh, the device I told you for meditation. You meditate with without the use of your phone. Yep. It, and uh, and then you have a product for you know doing a bit of uh, journaling and if you do that you have a great day and yeah i i okay i i mean i i like that approach i mean i don't call that a productivity approach as much as i think about that as a as a more part of the morning routine but i yeah. really like that like i re i really like the idea of just the phone being locked up until 8 a.m yeah you know and and now, now here are all the other things you should do with your morning. That's pretty strong. That's pretty strong. Yeah, I mean, I was just like worried. We were just worried about the the messaging, you know, like in in the ads, to just attack productivity or you know, like be more present, disconnect from from from. The thing is, Heinz, they'll all work. They'll all, all right. work. Yeah. So it's it's not a matter of picking the right one. It's about picking the one that feels most in alignment with what you want to do in the world. 
So which one feels lightest? Which one feels easiest? Which one feels more creative? Which one feels like it's in service to someone else? Which one feels clear? Which one feels clean? They, like you, you base it on that because all of these will work. But I will say the way that you just described a morning routine was very clear and clean. And if you went with that, you'd have my full blessing. You may, you may play with a few different types to find out what hits, sure. But as soon as you find one that is getting enough customer awareness that you're getting sales and reviews, you milk that sucker for a while before you move on. All right, awesome. And also, when do you think, for example, yeah, we know the essence now of the brand. Mm -hmm. You think we, we should start now doing, starting with the logo and, and the branding, because we want to start documenting from also the, you know, the Instagram page. Or... Well, you, you should, but you shouldn't do it at the expense of sharing and building the audience. Some people use logo and branding, just like, just like Rob, we're talking about like, I want to have a really good design. Well, some people will use a really good design as a barrier to them building the audience and actually launching the darn product. So yes, you need a logo and you need a brand and you need those things, but you don't do them at the, like those are very minor in comparison to other things that get the product into the hands of a customer. So you make those decisions as quickly as you can, hold the trigger, and we can always fix those things later. I want you to go get a prototype. Yeah, I will. I, I ordered the, the competitors um, Good. on Lockbox, but now I'm, I'm gonna talk to the manufacturer. Good, I want you to go get a prototype and start talking about it so that we can get you the first sale and get you on the growth path. Sound good? Yeah, awesome. All right, Heinz, good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Thank you, guys. Bye. Sometimes you could be sitting on an idea and you just need an outside perspective from somebody who's done this hundreds of times to be able to tell you what button to push or what your best opportunity is. That's what we did here in this conversation with Heinz. So if you want to be in the room and you want to get personalized help for the idea that's in your head that you're just not sure how to bring to paper and launch to the world where we excel is helping people launch their brand, get to 100 sales a day, and have a multi-million dollar exit. And whenever you're ready to start your journey, you can join us over at capitalism.com slash one. I'm Ryan Daniel Moran with capitalism.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.